Hey guys, this is Einar. Welcome to your 25th tutorial in basic statistics in Excel. Uh, we're going to continue talking about correlation measures and uh, we're still talking about measures between um, frequencies that have values in, in, in variables that are on nominal scale. So you can't place them on high, low or good or bad or anything. Um, it's slightly different than the percent difference uh, measure in that the we are instead of comparing this uh, side to that side, we're comparing these two cells to these two cells. And in fact, this measure, I believe, is more intuitive when it comes to comparing it to to further correlation measures we're going to talk about in the coming tutorials. But you'll you'll see that when we get there. Uh, right now, we're just going to calculate this formula. It looks like this. Use Q. Uh, it's uh, and it was in invented by this guy called. George Udniu. Now you might wonder why am I adding a picture of this dude and a link to a Wikipedia site about him. Well, the reason is that as a social scientist studying maths, I found it really hard because we learn when we're studying sociology that question everything, think by yourself, think critically, think about context. Why? Where does this theory come from? Who, who invented it, and why? And when when we suddenly start studying maths, we just have to take a lot of stuff for granted, and it's really hard when you have a mindset of criticizing and and turning theories around and, and seeing relationships and stuff. So, uh, in order to compensate for the fact that we just have to accept some stuff in maths when we're studying at a basic level, you can kind of get rid of that urge to criticize and understand the context by actually uh, satisfying it by checking out the reason these different statistical measures came to be in the first place. So this is more like for a psychological thing for social scientists to be able to handle maths. Okay, so that's that's my idea of why I have it there. It's based on my own experiences from studying statistics and I found it when I when I found out what the measures were for I found it a lot more fun to study it. But this is the formula we're going to work with. Uh, and you, you, you might say that it's similar to the percent difference, and you're going to see that when we start calculating it. So we go equal to a parenthesis. We go B multiplied by C. You see it there? B multiplied by C. So we mark this cell, the B cell, multiplied by the C cell, minus the A cell, which is 15, multiplied by the frequencies in the D cell, which is there close the parenthesis and we're going to divide this new parenthesis my b multiplied by c plus a multiplied by d which is the same thing but we're adding instead of subtracting so let's just write that we're going to take um, b multiplied by c and we're adding uh, a multiplied by d there we go so that's our formula we hit enter we get minus 56 what does this mean well i'm going to zoom in a little bit um <clears throat> what we're measuring here actually is the weight. Uh, how many frequencies are in the are there in these two cells combined compared to how many frequencies are there in these cells combined? If you imagine this was a scatter plot, and you were all the frequencies were little dots like they were in our previous tutorials about the median, you would you would have um, some dots going up this way and a couple dots going down that way. But would you you would have a lot of dots going down this way, especially in this part of the of the graph. So if you were to draw a line representing the the, free, the distribution of dots, it would be a downward sloping line like this, which this reflects. It's a downward sloping. Uh, it's a downward da a minus here. So it's a da it's a minus correlation. If we drew it as a scatter plot, we we would have a line going down like this, showing that when you go from blonde to dark, uh, people would tend to like vanilla more. So it would go like Shh, down like that. I mean, if and, and another way to understand this is just put in some like extreme extreme values. So say, one thousand dark-haired people preferred strawberry to vanilla. Suddenly we get a positive relationship because now we have a lot more observations going up this way in these two cells. So if you if we had a that scale that was tipped in different directions, it would go up like this, and you would have a line going up. Meanwhile, if I had zero here. And zero there, I would get a perfect negative correlation, because we have no uh, frequencies here and no frequencies there, and all the frequencies are just blah, 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 all the way down here. So it would be going downward sloping. And really, this is the way to learn these these correlation things. As I said in the last tutorial, try putting in extreme variables um, and just try to 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 get a feel for how how do they change when I change the frequencies? What effect will this have on my final measure? This is one of the great things with calculating this in Excel because it changes our results automatically when we change the raw data. 
So that's it for, for me on the use Q measure. I hope to see you in the future tutorials because we're going to move on to, to uh, variables on an ordinal scale and interval scales and etc. So it's going to be really exciting the coming tutorials. I hope to see you there and have fun playing around with this measure. See you later.